So chapter 18, you can make radicals, right? So this is all about radicals. Radicals, of course, are electron deficient. They do not have a full octet. But there are some radicals that you literally can buy a bottle of, right? They're, they're stable. Now, why would they, why could a, how and why could a radical be stable? Well, guess what? Radicals, because they're electron deficient, right? See this O dot there and O dot there. All of these N dot, O dot, they can do resonance, right? Radicals, just like carbocations, can be stabilized by hyperconjugation, pi bond resonance, and lone pair resonance. It's a little different, and we'll work on that in the, later on, how that resonance works, because it has to be with the fish hook arrows, but it's resonance nonetheless, right? Anytime you have resonance, that makes you, that can lower your energy and make you more stable. So that's why a lot of these radicals that we use can be purchased and be on a, in a bottle, but they're still reactive, certainly. But they're stable because of those reasons, hyperconjugation, pi bond resonance, lone pair resonance. Now, how does this take place? A lot of times it's heat, maybe light energy, right? If you, like I said, if you see these peroxides, so here's a nice, really sterically bulky peroxide that could help, right, temper how it reacts. Um, but it's what make it stop reacting with something you don't want to react with. But you can do this homolytic cleavage, right? We break that OO bond, these peroxides, energy is put in to make these O dots, right? This one doesn't have any resonance, but this one does, right? You can see this one can have resonance, and it also, this benzyloxy radical can break down further. See, there's some nice radical mechanism arrows where we actually make CO2, and this really, really, this really, really uh, reactive phenyl radical. Why is this phenyl radical really, really reactive? So like I said, this low, this radical, this electron can't do resonance. It's in an sp2 orbital. The driving force is losing gas, CO2, so that helps make that happen. Other things can happen. They can really break down some more. This is AIBN. This is a classic one people will use. This looks like a lot's going on. A lot of fish hook arrows. What you see here at the end, you make N2, which of course is a gas again, which bubbles out of solution. So that's going to be a driving force. You make a radical that's in a tertiary radical that's also next to a nitrile, which could do some resonance as well, some pi bond resonance as well. Right? So this is another classic kind of initiator. Things you look for, AIBN is a classic one, um, the, any of these peroxides as well. So what are two things that you notice that's similar for both of these radical reactions? What do you notice? You're going to make... Right, you have reactive, either an OO, or you make a stable radical. And the other thing, right, you might create a gas, and that helps drive gas as other product. And that helps drive the production of the radical by Le Chatelier's principle, right? pushing the radical towards, the, the star material towards becoming a radical. So we covered radical stability, just like carbocations, kind of these initiators we call them, these radical initiators, what they have in common. They form some stable radicals, that are, they come from reactive star materials, maybe they create a gas to drive the, react, the formation. What about radicals in stereochemistry? So it's very similar to carbocations. Carbocations are, right, just like radicals, these are sp2 hybridized, right? Meaning they're planar, right? They have the only difference is now they have an electron that's floating in between up and down that p orbital, that empty p orbital. They're floating up and down between there. So it's still planar sp2 hybridized. So when you add things to a radical, it can either come from the top face or the bottom face. So radicals are going to give you racemic mixtures. If, they're ma if you're making a, a, an asymmetric center, right, like you are here, right, so this Br2 reacts, right, there's an initiation step. It takes, I'm going to, I'll go through this, but just to look at it, it reacts and you get a bromine at the top or you get a bromine at the bottom. Either way, you get two different, right, two different uh, enantiomers. Now, if it went to the less substituted carbon, the one right here, all right, this has two H's on it, so it's not going to form an antimers. 
So uh, as I said, radicals are very similar to carbocations at the same hybridization state. Both are sp2 hybridized. They're both stabilized by hyperconjugation, lone pair resonance, pi bond resonance. But radicals will not rearrange. Right? If you make right, I'm always looking to pull the CH off or react with an alkene with radicals. I, there's no hydrogens to pull off here. The best I can do is a secondary, a secondary radical. That's the best I can do. Whereas if this was a carbocation, right, I'd have this leave, and then I do a methyl shift, and I can get a tertiary carbocation. Radicals do not rearrange. They can't rearrange. So that makes our life a little bit easier. Right? A little bit easier. What if I want to get a bromine on the less substituted carbon of an alkene? If I did not have peroxides here, if it was just HBr plus an alkene, where would the bromine end up? The bromine would end up on, let's see if I number these carbons, number one or two. Put in the chat, if I did not have peroxides, just HBr, just HBr by itself, where would the bromine end up? One or two. Bromine, if there was no peroxides, the bromine would end up on carbon two because we form a carbocation and we want to make the most stable carbocation, tertiary carbocation. Awesome. But since we're in the presence of peroxides, and I've, we did this in a video, we showed this, we we're actually going to make the bromine is going to go here, or the Br dot at some point is going to react with this. We're going to make a uh, radical that's a tertiary radical. So this is a nice way to get, we call these anti-Markovnikov brominations, right? which is a fancy way of saying, can I put the bromine on the less substituted carbon? It's a way to put the bromine on the less substituted carbon. That's what anti-Markovnikov means. Notice the stereochemistry, right? Again, because we have a radical, we're going to go through in this reaction, we will have an intermediate that has a radical at carbon 2, which means the H that adds can come from the top face or the bottom face, so we get both stereoisomers here, so we get a pair of diastereomers, which would be different if it was just HBr, right? The bromine would add here, and we get a totally different product, but also a pair of diastereomers. Okay. Radicals can be stabilized just like carbocations. We know how to make some initiating radicals, why they're made. We know something about their stereochemistry, right? Their sp2 hydrides, top, you go from the top to the bottom. They do not rearrange. If we want to make an anti-Markovnikov product where a bromine is on the less substituted carbon of an alkene, we can do that with radicals that peroxides, h brown peroxides. What if I want to make an allylic bromine? Right now, remember, you need to know that term, allylic. Right? These are the allylic positions. They're the ones that are one bond away from the alkene. Those are called allylic carbons. Similar to a benzylic position, which is one bond away from the benzene ring. If I wanted to do an allylic bromination, allylic bromination, I use this reagent called NBS. And there's a, this is what the reagent looks like. And I'll go through blow by blow the mechanism later. But just know it's an alternative, a new way to get a bromine into the allylic position. Now notice, right, if I put a radical here, I'd get both the bromine coming from the top face and the bromine coming from the bottom face. In this case, what have I made? I've made a pair of enantiomers. These would have the same physical properties. Right? They'd be very difficult to separate. Notice, this is an alternative. Right? If I put Br2 in here, what would happen with Br2 in an alkene? Well, you know what happens with Br2 in an alkene. It makes a bromonium ion. Right? So this is a way to do some different chemistry with a new reagent to get a different type of product. An allylic bromination right, with this new reagent called NBS, N-bromosuccinamide. Right? And we'll talk about that mechanism later.